Part 3 of rebuilding a Stuart Model's twin launch model steam engine and it's repairing the crankshaft time. I'm just removing the second connecting rod. As before, I'm discarding the locking washers. They really are not required and they look terrible on a model steam engine. They're incredibly overscale. So off comes the second connecting rod and here it is. And once again, just to show what happens if you put it back together the wrong way around, it's obvious that it's wrong. For now, I'll reassemble it loosely so that I know which way around it goes. The last job is the removal of the two remaining eccentric sheaves. There goes the first one and here's the second one. You will notice that I also put the tools used to remove the parts from the crankshaft in the box also. And it's over now to the drilling machine to drill out the peg. The crankshaft is very loose at this point, so I need to remove the peg. And here I'm using a magnifying glass to make sure that the centre drill is exactly in the middle of the peg. So with a nice neat centre drilled hole in the centre of the peg, I can replace the centre drill with a 1 8 twist drill and drill all the way down. I'm being very careful with this process because if the drill was to break in the work, then the crankshaft is scrap. But really, looking at the crankshaft, it's not that good to start with, so I'm not quite as nervous as I would be if the crankshaft was pristine. If I look at the crankshaft, apart from the wobbly middle bit that I'm trying to repair, the shaft itself is very badly marked. And it's not too bad if it's marked just on the ends, but the journal part of the crankshaft, that run in the main bearings, are quite badly scored, so I'm having second thoughts about this repair. But the purpose of the video is to show people how to do this job, so we'll continue anyway. In case you wonder why the drilling machine is wobbling, it's because it's not bolted down. One day I will bolt it to the ground. So the parts are now put into some cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinners as it's called in the USA. And the purpose of this is to thoroughly degrease the components, because very shortly I'm going to be loctiting them back together. And loctite doesn't work very well if the parts are really oily and dirty. This, by the way, is not the toothbrush that I use in the morning for cleaning my teeth. It's one that I keep in the workshop. And it's very important to make sure it does not have a polystyrene handle. Otherwise, the lacquer thinners, or cellulose thinners, will dissolve the handle. And that's no good at all. To complete the job, I'm using a piece of Scotch-Brite to thoroughly clean the end of the shaft. Scotch-Brite is a very abrasive scouring pad. And it's very useful stuff for cleaning up pieces of metal. I always keep a quantity of it in the workshop, and I generally buy it online. This clip shows two very clean pieces of broken crankshaft. So now I'm going to apply some Loctite to Loctite them back together. This is Loctite 638, it's supposed to be stronger than 603. But it is also slightly more viscous than 603, which could be a problem if the tolerances are very close. But in this case they're not, so it should be perfect for the job. This next bit is quite important. With the crankshaft firmly in the lathe, clamped at both ends so it's held in the correct position, it's essential to make sure that the peg and the hole in the crankshaft align. I'd already made a new peg, which you can see on the bench, and I need to fit this in place in the hole in the crankshaft. This next part takes place after the Loctite has cured, and in the picture at the moment is a hammer, a rather large hammer. This is more of a model size hammer. Hitting the pin with a large hammer is likely to damage the crankshaft, so it's more sensible to use a lighter weight, and don't put a lot of pressure on it. I'm doing this on a steel block that sits on my bench which is very solid indeed. And even though it looks like I'm putting a lot of pressure on the crankshaft, I'm not. And then when I put the crankshaft back in the lathe, I notice it's still not right. The part I've fixed is, but also the next part is loose. I didn't notice this because everything was really moving. You can see the oil ring around the pin. And this is a deja vu. I'm doing the same again. I'm going to try and fix the second one. No, I'm not really. What I'm just doing is showing the principle one more time at high speed. I've already decided to scrap this crankshaft. It's no good at all. I was, of course, curious to see whether by doing this job the crankshaft was in good alignment, but when I checked it in the lathe with the dial test indicator, it was bent in so many different places, so it's really scrap. All I'm doing at the moment is just having a quick play. I'm really just checking that the bearing top caps fit in the correct place. 
As far as the crankshaft goes, it's going to go in the same place as the inlet and exhaust manifold, and that is the bin. So that's three things I have to make. A new crankshaft, an inlet manifold, and an exhaust manifold. So one quick trip to Blackgate's engineering, and I pick up these. I bought some Loctite 603 and two pieces of metal. This will make the crankshaft. It's a piece of silver steel, 5 sixteenths in diameter. I already had some of that, but I needed some more for stock, and a 1 eighth thick piece of steel bar. The Loctite 603 is still my favourite. I don't think I like the viscosity of 638. So in one of the episodes of this series, I will be making a new crankshaft from scratch. Just to diversify for a moment, if you watch what I'm doing, I'm using a magnet to pick up this piece of silver steel. And as you can see, the magnet picks it up as you would expect a magnet to do. These are other pieces of steel, and this is not terribly magnetic. It is sort of magnetic, but not very much. Not as much as that. And these small pieces, well, they appear to be a bit magnetic, but they're not really. There's nothing there. And this piece of steel is also not very magnetic. And the reason for this, of course, is that the large piece is silver steel, and the other pieces are stainless steel. And stainless steel is generally non-magnetic. But the magnetism does vary depending on the type of stainless steel it is. This is a piece of wood. This is definitely not magnetic. This is a barco adjustable spanner, and they really are good, and they're very magnetic. That's made of iron. You can also use a magnet to test whether the balls in your clack valves are stainless or just ordinary ball bearings. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.